Hi there and welcome into this tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing how you can set your own checkpoints. So this is going to be actors just like this one, that when your player dies, he's going to be getting teleported into these checkpoints just like that. In order to create our player checkpoint, we first need to create the checkpoint itself. That's going to be an object that I'm going to be placing in the world so that I can set where I should have these checkpoints. For that, here in our content drawer, I'm going to right click, then I'm going to blueprint class, and I'm going to select a actor. This is going to be our dp underscore checkpoint. Now open this up, I'm going to be adding a static mesh. Uh, you don't need to add a static mesh, I'm going to be doing this only because I want, actually I'm going to be adding a cube, uh, only because I want some visual representation of where my checkpoints are. You don't actually need that uh, just for debugging purposes. So as you can see, I have added the cube so that now I can drag this around and I can see where I am placing the checkpoints. But the way that I'm going to be doing this is actually very simple and I'm not going to be using this static mesh. I'm actually going to be adding a new component that's going to be, be a sphere. So this sphere collision over here, just add into our, yeah, yeah, leave it at the cube, yeah, something like that, into the fault and root. I'm going to be increasing this quite a bit. The size, of course, is up to you, but I think that should be good enough for me. Let me take a look. Yeah, that that should work for me. So basically, uh, my intention or intent right now is that when our character, let's say, goes near this cube over here, he's going to set his new checkpoint. And then let's see if he progresses a little bit more into our game. That's going to be a new checkpoint over here, and it's going to change the location of his checkpoints. But for that, first, uh, now we need to go to our player character. So let's go into third person and then blueprints, pp underscore third person character. And of course, I have not mentioned it before, but I'm using the third person template. Uh, but it's going to be the same thing for the other templates as well. So here. First thing that you need to do is to see when our character is alive or dead. Uh, for that, I'm going to be adding a new variable that's going to be his health. This is going to be a float. Now, uh, let's just compile this. And by default, I think I'm going to be leaving this as 100, just like that. And then let's see. So uh, over here, I first need to create the event of our dead. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to be creating the event of death first, uh, but first I need to create a check as well. So over here, I'm going to get the event tick, and then I'm going to get a branch. This branch is going to check if our health is equal or less, oops, second equal or less, less or equal then zero just like that and if that's the case then i'm going to be adding a new event that's going to be awesome event yeah like that then i'm going to be getting this event over here and then i'm going to also be create a new variable that's one second variables over here i'm going to be create a new variable that's going to be def a question mark and it's going to be a boolean type and here I'm going to be adding an end boolean. And I'm going to be getting this dev. And it should not be, so get another boolean. Place into this pin and then into here. Because now I'm going to be checking if our character is already dead or not. And then I'm going to also be creating another one that's going to be for current lives. Of course, this is up to you. I'm going to only give a demonstration of how you could implement this if you want. And this is going to be an integer. Compile by default, I'm going to be leaving as three. And over here into our dev event, the first thing that I'm going to be doing is to set this to true. So that's not going to be triggering this event over and over again. And then I'm going to check if our lives is greater or equal to one. If that's the case, I'm going to get a branch, place this pin over here. Then if that's the case, I'm going to be creating another event. So let's just get custom event. This spawn. Oops. 
And it's important to note that you could also create more functionality over here. That's the main reason of why I'm separating this event of this one. Uh, but for now, I think I'm going to only be getting this respawn event, if this is true. And of course, I also need to decrease the number of lives. So let's just get lives. And I'm going to be setting our lives to this, uh, to our current lives, minus one. Just like that. Place it over here and then here. This here as well. Like that. And then it's going to our first power event. This is power event is going to teleport our character to his last checkpoint. For that, I need to create another variable that's going to be our last checkpoint. This is going to be a vector. And compile this. And then I'm going to just be getting this last checkpoint vector over here. And then I'm going to set, set actor location. So it should be this one over here, set actor location. And then I'm going to be setting his new location. Place as teleport, just like that. And then into his teaser spawn and should be good. And of course, at the end, set depth back to false, just like that. And his life back to 100 as well. Just set it over here. Just like that. So it should be working fine. So this is our check statement to see if our character has zero life or not. So check if it has more than zero health show bubble this over here is our death event show bubble as well and this is our respawn like that show bubble as well and now compile it save it now in our bp checkpoint here in our event graph with our sphere selected, I'm going to get add on overlap. Uh, should be this one over here, add on component begin overlap, this one over here. I am not going to be using this event, so I'm going to just be deleting like that. And on component begin overlap, I'm going to get player character. And then I'm going to make a cast, cast to BP third person character, place it over here. Then I'm going to set, uh, I don't remember the name, I think it was last checkpoint. So then set last checkpoint. And this I'm going to get our, let's first get, get, get actor location. Like that. The target is going to be for self and I'm going to be placing this location over here and then into here. Just like that. Yeah, it should be working great. Uh, should be working fine. So now this is to set set player checkpoint. Compile it, this show bubble as well. Compile it, and yeah, that should be fine. Just for debugging, I am going to get a print string over here. This print string is going to only say a new checkpoint, like that. And over here. To make our player dies, I think I'm going to here in our event begin play just for the boogie. I'm going to get a delay, a delay event of let's say five seconds. Then I am going to print a string saying that, and I am going to set his life, his health to zero, just like that. So once this is set to zero, it should trigger. This event on the event tick, that's going to say he is dead, and then it's going to put for this death event. It's going to check this as true, so that's not going to be triggering this event over and over again. Then it's going to check if he has enough lives to be able to respawn. If he has, then it's going to decrease one life, and it's going to this event. This event is going to set his new location for the last checkpoint, and it's going to set death back to false and his life back to 100, so that's not going to be set in this event over and over again. So, now let's just copy this group and place another one. Oops, not that far. I think I'm going to be placing it around here. So now let's go into our game. I'm going to get this new checkpoint. Let's wait a bit, and I should be teleported back. Yeah, just like that. 
So let's get a new checkpoint over here. New checkpoint. And I should be teleported back to there. Once, ah, yeah, I, I have not placed in TVNT. I have placed in TVNT in play. So it's not going to be getting that over and over again. But just for testing, just be copying this again. Copy this. Place over here. Just for testing purposes. Compile it. Save it. Let's see now. So got first checkpoint. If I die, I go back into here. Let's get a new checkpoint over here. And if I die, I get back into here again. Just like that. So that's pretty much it for our checkpoints. Thanks a lot for watching. And I hope to see you again soon. Visit train.memtinteract.com and enroll into Scourge to get all source files. Use coupon code MEMITY to enroll for free.